Hi everyone, welcome again to the basic Philippine Law and Jurisprudence channel. We are again on our series of lectures on property and land law. So now we will discuss quieting of title. Quieting of title is one of the remedies which is available to exercise the right to vindicate or to protect or to recover possession of real property. Okay, Article 476 tells us that whenever there is a cloud on title to real property or any interest therein, by reason of any instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding, which is apparently valid and effective, but is in truth and in fact invalid, ineffective, voidable, or unenforceable, and may be prejudicial to the said title, an action may be brought to remove such cloud or to quiet title. An action may also be brought to prevent a cloud from being cast upon title to real property or any interest therein. Okay? To be appropriate uh, for the remedy of quieting of title, there is a necessity for the existence of a cloud. Now, what is a cloud on the title? It is a semblance of title, either legal or equitable, or a claim or right in real property appearing in some legal form, but which is in fact invalid or unfounded, or which would be inequitable to enforce. Uh, jurisprudence is replete with pronouncements regarding the requirements for an action to quiet title. The first requirement is that the plaintiff has, has to have a legal or equitable title to or interest in real property, subject of the action. So the, the title need not necessarily be uh, a legal title, meaning a, a torrent's title. An equitable title may be sufficient to vest the plaintiff with the right to file an action to quiet title. As you know, an equitable title is one uh, which is enjoyed by one who has a beneficial uh, title to the said property. It may be one which is acquired through acquisitive prescription. Although the uh, plaintiff does not have the requisite uh, legal title to the property, he has completed the required number of years needed uh, for uh, ownership to be vested through a prescriptive prescription. Okay? And the second requirement for an action to quiet title is that the deed claim or encumbrance or proceeding claimed to be casting cloud on his title must be shown to be in fact invalid or inoperative despite its prima facie appearance of validity or legal efficacy. So after showing that you have legal or equitable title to the property, okay, you must show that the cloud on the title, okay, the deed claim encumbrance or proceeding, okay, must in fact be invalid, ineffective, or unenforceable. So you must show first your legal or equitable title, then you must show that the cloud on the title, okay, which is possessed by the defendant is in fact invalid or inoperative. Okay, the first case is Diaz versus Virata. Okay, uh, Diaz versus Virata, Antenor purchased in good faith and for consideration two parcels of land and the corresponding TCTs were issued. And then subsequently, uh, after almost three decades, Enrique filed a claim with the DNR alleging that he had been in continuous possession of the same lots owned by Antenor. So we have here one who is a holder of a legal title and one which is claiming that he is the owner, although... Uh, of the beneficial owner of that same parcel of land. Okay, in this case, the Supreme Court defined 
an action for quieting of title as a remedy which may be availed of only when by reason of any instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding which appears to be valid but is in fact invalid, ineffective, voidable, or unenforceable, a cloud is thereby cast on the complainant's title to real property or any interest therein. Okay, and uh, the Supreme Court also uh, enumerated the requirements for an action to quiet title, which is legal or equitable title or interest on the part of the plaintiff and the invalidity or unenforceability of the cloud on the title. Okay, we have upheld the fundamental principle in land registration that a certificate of title serves as evidence of an indefeasible and incontrovertible title to the property in favor of the person whose name appears therein. It becomes the best proof of ownership of a parcel of land. Well established is the principle that the person holding a prior certificate is entitled to the land as against a person relies on the subsequent certificate. This rule refers to the date of a certificate of title. Absent any monument of title issued prior to 1959 in favor of the appellants, which could prove their ownership over the contested lots, this court is left with no other alternative but to declare appellants claim over the properties as void. So in this case, the uh, plaintiff was not able to prove this cause of action. So the first requirement, which is legal or equitable title to the property, because an equitable title has to be proven. So the manner of possession, open, notorious, exclusive, continuous possession of the property for the required number of years sufficient to vest ownership through acquisitive prescription. So the uh, plaintiff did not meet the uh, evidentiary requirement to prove legal or equitable title. We now come to the case of Tandog versus Makapagal. So in this case, petitioners claim that they and their predecessors in interest have been in actual open, continuous, exclusive, and notorious possession of the land. When petitioners decided to apply for judicial registration, they found that portions of the land were occupied by spouses Calderon and Macapagal. Thus, the petitioners filed a complaint for quieting of title. A claim of right based on acquisitive prescription or adverse possession has been held to constitute a removable cloud on the title. Okay? Because you must remember that a cloud on the title consists of an instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding. So if you claim to have been in open, continuous, notorious, exclusive possession of the property, then it is a claim and it constitutes a cloud on the title. So petitioners must first establish their legal or equitable title to or interest in the real property, subject matter of the action. However, they failed to do so. They did not present any evidence to prove that Casimiro and Polycarpio existed and that he is their predecessor in interest. So again, the first requirement is lacking. Uh, they were not able to prove legal or equitable uh, title to the property subject matter of the action. So that therefore, their claim must fail. We have the case of Green Acres versus Cabral. So in this case, Victoria was the original owner of a parcel of land which was placed under PD 57. Okay, three emancipation patents were issued. Uh, to the spouses Moraga, and the spouses Moraga uh, sold the lots to Filcon, which was in turn purchased by Green Acres. So Cabral filed the complaint before the parad, seeking the cancellation of the emancipation patents which were issued to the spouses Moraga on the grounds that these were obtained to fraud. So Green Acres 
filed a complaint for quieting of title. So there are now two proceedings, one which was filed by Green Acres for quieting of title and the other one which was filed by, by Cabral before the Darab for the cancellation of the emancipation packet. Now, the issue in this case is whether the Darab decision in favor of Cabral constitutes a cloud on Green Acres' title over the subject properties. The court is tasked to determine the respective rights of the complainant and the other claimants, not only to place things in their proper places and make the claimant was no rights to set immovable respect and not disturb the one so entitled, but also for the benefit of both so that whoever has the right will see every cloud of doubt over the property dissipated, and he can thereafter carelessly introduce any desired improvements as well as use and even abuse the property. There is no dispute as to the first requisite since Green Acres has legal title, so the issue lies in the second requisite. So in this case, unlike the first two cases, where in the first requisite were not established, in Green Acres, the first requisite was met because he has legal title. He's the registered owner of the real property. Now, the issue here is with respect to the second requirement. Okay, the second requirement, uh, meaning the existence of a cloud, which is invalid, ineffective, or unenforceable. In this case, the court holds that the Darab decision in favor of Cabral satisfies all the four elements of a cloud on the title. The Darab decision is actually a proceeding, okay? And there is already a decision, okay? So it is actually an instrument or a writing, okay, which can constitute a cloud on the title. And in this case also, the court found it opportune to explain or define the different kinds of clouds in the title. So the, the, the court defined an instrument as a document or writing which gives formal expression for a legal act or agreement for the purpose of creating, securing, modifying, or terminating a right. A record, on the other hand, is defined as a written account of some act court proceeding, transaction, or instrument drawn up under authority of law by a proper officer and designed to remain as a memorial or permanent evidence of the matters to which it relates. It is likewise uh, a claim which is defined as a cause of action or a demand for money or property since Cabral is asserting her right over the subject lots. It is a proceeding which is defined as a regular and orderly progress in form of law, including all possible steps in an action from its commencement to the execution of judgment and may refer not only to a complete remedy, but also to a mere procedural step that is part of a larger, larger action or special proceeding. So in this case, the proceedings in the Darab is both a proceeding a claim as well as an instrument or a rent. Okay, so it, it can constitute a cloud on the title. However, the Supreme Court further said, also the Darab decision is apparently valid and effective. It is a final decision that has not been reversed, vacated, or nullified. It is likewise apparently effective and may be prejudicial to green acres. Since it orders the cancellation of the titles of the spouses Moraga and Philcon. However, it is ineffective and unenforceable against Green Acres because Green Acres was not properly implemented in the Dara proceedings, nor was there any notice of respondents annotated in the title of Philcon. Again, one of the proper remedies of a person who was not implemented in the proceedings declaring null and void the title from which his title to the property had been derived is an action for quieting title. We have the case of Evangelista versus Tanjago. So in this case, petitioners allege 
that they occupied and possessed the parcels of land by virtue of several deeds of assignment executed by a certain Ismael Pavila. Okay, petitioners found out, uh, petitioners uh, came and informed the respondent to evict them from the property. However, they found out that the subject property was included in the various titles all originating from OCT number 670, which is now in the name of the respondent. So, so the petitioners filed an action for declaration of nullity of the said title on the basis that the said title was fake and spurious. Respondent also raised the affirmative defense of prescription. Uh, petitioners, however, fail to establish in their complaint that they have any legal or equitable title to or legitimate interest in the subject property so as to justify their right to file an action to remove a cloud or to quiet title. Remember the first requisite, the legal or equitable title. Title to real property refers to that upon which ownership is based. It is the evidence of the right of the owner or the extent of his interest by, by means of which he can maintain control and assert right to exclusive possession and enjoyment of the property. So the deeds of assignment executed by Ismael Pabila in their favor revealed that petitioners' predecessors in interest based their right to the subject property on the Spanish title awarded to Don Hermogenes Rodriguez. So PD 892 divests Spanish titles of any legal force and effect in establishing ownership over real property. A holder of Spanish title may still lose his ownership of the real property to the occupant who actually possesses the same for the required prescriptive period. So in this case, the petitioner was not able to establish that he has legal or equitable title to the property because the basis on which his cause of action is founded is a Spanish title, which pursuant to PD 892 no longer has any legal force and effect. Okay, so the first requirement in this case was not established. On the other hand, the defendant has in his favor an original certificate of title. Okay, so considering that the first requirement was not met, it is futile to discuss the second requirement. Okay, so the action for quieting of title was dismissed. Okay, so Article 477, uh, of course, we have already discussed that this is actually the first requirement. The plaintiff must have legal or equitable title to or interest in the real property, which is the subject matter of the action. He need not be in possession of the property. So for you to be able to maintain an action, to quiet title, all that you have to have, Okay, as basis for your cause of action is legal or equitable ownership. It, uh, the law does not require you to be in possession of the property. Article 478 tells us that there may also be an action to quiet title or to remove a cloud therefrom when the contract, instrument, or other obligation has been extinguished or has terminated or has been barred by extinctive prescription. Article 479, the plaintiff must return to the defendant all benefits he may have received from the latter or reimburse him for all the expenses that may have redounded to the plaintiff's benefit. So if there are taxes that have already been paid, for example, the principles of the general law in quieting of title are hereby adopted insofar as they are not in conflict with this code. And Article 481, the procedure for quieting of title or for the removal of a cloud shall be governed by the rules of court as the Supreme Court may promise. Okay. So we now come to the case of Kalakala versus Republic. So in this case, the spouses Kalakala are the registered owners of a parcel of land. They offered the said land as property bond in a criminal case. However, 
because of the non-appearance of the accused at the trial, judgment was rendered against the property one. So the property was sold at public auction and the republic became the winning leader. Okay, now after several years and claiming ownership over the same parcel of land, the petitioners filed a complaint for quieting of title. Um, they argue that they are still the owners of the parcel of land. This because the republic failed, uh, despite their failure to redeem it within the one year redemption period. Okay, they they argue that because of the republic's failure. To secure the certificate of final sale, execute an affidavit of consolidation, and obtain a writ of possession, uh, they are still the owners of the subject property. So, originating in equity jurisprudence, the Supreme Court again defined uh, the purpose of uh, quieting of title suit. Its purpose is to secure an adjudication that the claim of title to or an interest in property adverse to that of the complainant is invalid so that the complainant and those claiming under him may be forever afterward free from any danger or hostile claim. Unfortunately, the foregoing requisites are wanting in this case. So again, the first requirement was not satisfied by the plaintiff. Petitioners based their claim of legal title not on the strength of any independent writing in their favor, but simply and solely on the respondent failure to secure the certificate of final state. So you must remember that you have to have either legal or equitable title. So the plaintiffs in this case do not have any of those two. The Republic's failure to do anything within 10 years or more following the registration of the shared certificate of sale cannot give rise to a presumption that it has waived or abandoned its right of ownership. The expiration of the one-year redemption period forecloses the obligor's right to redeem and that the sale becomes absolute. The issuance thereafter of a final deed of sale is at best a mere formality and mere confirmation of title that is already vested in the purchaser. So the mere fact that the title still remains registered in the name of the spouses kalakala does not mean that uh, it is still the owner. So the, the fact that their right to redeem the property has already uh, expired, okay, the ownership ipso facto by operation of law, okay, best in the republic. Okay, so the first requisite for uh, an action of fighting of title to prosper has not been met. Okay, we have the case of Pocto versus Avila. In this case, Pocto was later substituted by his heirs, filed a complaint to quiet title. So the disputed property is allegedly different from the one hectare portion allotted to Polon Pocto, the predecessor in interest of the defendants, Avila. However, in an administrative case, it was found that the subject lot is public land located within the Baguio Town Site Reservation. So having established that the disputed property is public land, the trial court was therefore correct in dismissing the complaint of quiet title. Why? Because uh, there, the, uh, the, there, uh, the uh, plaintiff has not again satisfied the first requirement which is legal and equitable title or equitable title or interest to the property. So in this case, considering that it is public land, okay, it is a property of public dominion, it cannot be the subject matter of commerce. Okay, Delphine versus Bakud. So in this case, petitioners Delphine filed a complaint for quieting of title <clears throat> against respondents Bakud. So the spouses Tapa allege that they are the registered owners of lot 3341 through inheritance. So uh, in this case, spouses Tapa's claim of legal title over lot 3341 by virtue of the fee patent and certificate of title issued in their name cannot stand. 
At the time of the application for free patent, lot number 3341 has already become private land by virtue of the open, continuous, exclusive, and notorious possession by the respondent. So in this case, we have a case where it, one has legal title and the other one has equitable title. Okay, the rule in land registration laws is that if a person has uh, already acquired through acquisitive prescription, okay, a, uh, an, a parcel of land, agricultural in nature, and which belongs to the state, okay, and he has the uh, uh, possession, the manner of possession is open, notorious, exclusive, and continuous, okay, Best, he, ha, he already has a vested right of ownership over the said land. And the government can no longer dispose the same and award the same to uh, another person. So a free patent issued over a private land is null and void and produces no legal effect whatsoever. So the director of lands has no authority to grant a free patent to lands that have ceased to be public in character and have passed to private ownership. In an action to quiet title, legal title denotes registered ownership, while equitable title means beneficial ownership. As discussed, the fee patent and the certificate of title issued to spouses papa could not be the source of their legal title. So the second requisite for an action to quiet title is likewise one thing. We find that although an instrument, the 1963 affidavit exists and which allegedly cast doubt on spouse's tapas title, it was not shown to be in fact invalid or ineffective against spouse's tapas rights to the property. So the first as well as the second requisites were one thing in this case. We now move to the case of you versus so in this case, Topasio alleged that he is the registered owner of a parcel of land. Spouses, you were issued a transfer certificate of title. Topasio believed that the said title issued to the spouses, you is spurious, illegal, and null and void, as the same was issued much later than his title. Spouses, you on the other hand, explained that their predecessors acquired the said property from the Bureau of Lands. After the execution of the deed of sale, spouses you took possession of the property. So while Topasio was able to prove his legal title over the disputed portion of the property, he however failed to show that the title relied upon as basis for their claim of possession was in fact invalid or ineffective. So in other words, the first requirement has been met. He has legal title. However, the second requirement has, has not been met. Why? Because he failed to show that the title relied upon by the spouses you was in fact invalid or ineffective. Neither was there a showing that the TCP issued in favor of spouses you was procured through fraud. A torrent's title is generally conclusive evidence of ownership of the land and a strong presumption exists that a torrent's title was regularly issued and was valid. So there is no reason to doubt the validity of the title issued in favor of the spouse's you. The two certificates of title actually cover two different parcels of land. So uh, the title issued in the name of Topasho is entirely distinct from the title issued in the name of spouses. So the second requirement was not met because they cover two different properties. Okay, we now go to the case of Viloria versus Getos. In this case, Viloria filed a complaint for quieting of title. They claimed ownership over a 10,000 square meter lot having inherited the property. Uh, from their predecessor in interest who acquired the same through acquisitive prescription. Okay, the Quijados, on the other hand, alleged that Getos surreptitiously and without their knowledge 
cause the subject property to be surveyed for the purpose of claiming ownership. Okay, again, we have uh, uh, we have to distinguish again between legal and equitable title. Legal title denotes registered ownership, while equitable title means beneficial ownership. In the absence of such legal or equitable title, there is no cloud to be prevented. Here, the petitioners did not have legal title to the subject property. There were no certificates of title in their respective names. They also failed to substantiate their claim of having equitable titles. So the first requisite was not satisfied. They are claiming to have equitable title. However, they did not present sufficient evidence to prove to the court that indeed they are the beneficial owners of the property. Mere allegation of open, continuous, and exclusive possession of the property without substantiation does not meet the requirements of the law. So how do you prove equitable ownership? Well, if you are paying tax declarations, uh, tax declarations, ta uh, real property taxes, for example, testimonial evidence, records in the barangay, proving that you have been in possession of the subject property for the required number of years. Okay? Uh, however, they fail to meet the set one to Okay, we now go to the case of Reyes versus Lipe. So in this case, petitioners, Reyes, filed an action to quiet title. They claim that during his lifetime, Mamerto had accepted a verbal promise of the former lot owner, Felipe, to give the disputed lot to him. So the respondents, on the other hand, contended that they are the legal owners of the lot by virtue of a deed of exchange of real estate and a deed of absolute say between them and farm tech. Okay, to prove their case, the petitioners merely cited Section 4, Article 13 of the 1987 Constitution and Section 2 of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law and stated that their title was founded upon these provisions. In contrast, the respondents presented certain evidence which clearly preponderates in their favor. First, a TCT, tax declaration, and realty tax receipts were all in their name. Second, pursuant, pursuant to the torrent system, TC, the TCT in their name enjoys the conclusive presumption of validity. So, uh, Reyes versus Limpe is similar to the preceding case of Getos. Why? Because they were not able to prove the first requirement, which is equitable title. Okay, although they claim that they have acquired the property through a specific prescription, there is no sufficient evidence uh, that uh, were adduced in order to prove their claim of equitable title. On the other hand, the respondent has legal title and all the other documents which supported their claim that they are the legal owners of the real property. Okay. We now go to PNB versus Traders Royal Bank. Okay, so this case involves two mortgages of the same property. Okay, spouses Kalinawan on January 12, 1993, obtained a loan from PNB secured by a real estate mortgage over the property. Upon default of the spouses, PNB instituted foreclosure proceedings and PNB became the winning bidder. However, two years earlier, on August 26, 1996, Kalinawan obtained a loan from Traders Royal Bank, which was secured by a real estate mortgage over the same property under TCT number 54000. So there are actually two TCTs covering the same property. So the spouses Kalinawan also defaulted and Traders Royal Bank became the winning bidder. So PNB filed a quieting of title case with damages against Traders Royal Bank. Okay, TCT number 
T two six seven nine zero on which PNB relied and annotated its real estate mortgage and certificate of sale was already replaced by TCT number T five four zero 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 as early as nineteen ninety one or two years before the spouses Kalinawan obtained their loans with PNB. As correctly found out, spouses Kalinawan used the cancelled TCT to secure their loan with PNB in 1993 and used the new title as collateral for their loan with Traders Royal Bank in 1996. So how they were able to do that, the court does not know. Okay, Be because they use a cancelled transfer certificate to obtain the PNB loan and then after that, two years later, they obtained another loan using the current TCT of the same property. So we have here an interest. Okay? Remember that the first requirement, you must have legal or equitable title or interest on the property subject matter of the action for you to be able to file a uh, quieting of title case. Although PNB has already foreclosed the mortgage and has become the winning bidder, still he has no, he cannot be said to be the legal or equitable owner. Although it may be said that he has an interest over the real property subject of the action. So he has satisfied the first requirement. However, with respect to the second requirement, the Supreme Court said, having failed to register its real estate mortgage and certificate of sale as contemplated under the law, said transactions were valid only between spouses, Talinawan and PNB, and are not binding on PRB. It is well settled that the Act of Registration is the operative act to convey or affect land insofar as third persons are concerned. Why? Because their mortgage was registered on the cancelled certificate. Okay, it was not registered in the current certificate of title. So it is not binding on TRB or Traders Royal Bank. So the second requirement is lacking. Okay, it PNB failed to show that the cloud on the title is in fact invalid, ineffective, or unenforceable. Okay, uh, it is essential that PNB proves the invalidity of said TCTs in order to nullify them and remove the cloud, resetting its own title over the subject property. Clearly, PNB's complaint for quieting of title is a direct attack on TRB's title. The CA therefore urged in ruling that PNB's complaint amounts to a collateral attack. PNB failed to convince the appellate court that the alleged cloud on the title is in fact invalid or inoperative despite its prima facie appearance of validity. Okay. We now go to the case of Portic versus Stobal. In this case, the spouses Alcantara were the original registered owners of a parcel of land with a three-door apartment. They sold the property to the petitioners with the condition that the latter shall assume the mortgage executed over the property. Petitioners defaulted in the payment <clears throat> of the monthly amortizations due on the mortgage. So the SSS foreclosed the mortgage and sold the property at public auction. Before the expiration, the redemption period, Petitioners sold the property in favor of the defendant, Cristobal. So, the spouses Alcantara, the original owners of the subject property, sold the subject property to the respondent. Spouses Alcantara's title was cancelled and in lieu thereof, another title was issued in the name of the respondent. Generally, the registered owner of a property is the proper party to bring an action quiet title. However, it has been held that this remedy may also be availed of by a person other than the registered owner. Because uh, title does not necessarily refer to the original or TCT 
Thus, lack of an actual certificate of title to a property does not necessarily bar an action to quiet title. Petitioners have not turned over and have thus retained their title to the property. So the above uh, cited provision characterizes the agreement between the parties as a contract to sell, not a contract of sale. Ownership is retained by the vendors, the parties. It will not be passed to the customers until the full payment of the purchase price. So the claim of the respondent cannot be sustained. The transfer of ownership of the premises in her favor was subject to the suspensive condition stipulated by the parties. Rumarate versus Hernandez. So in this case, Rumarate filed an action for a conveyance of real property or for quieting of title against the heirs of Fernandez. Rumarate claimed that a parcel of land was previously possessed and cultivated by his godfather, Santiago. Santiago bequeathed his rights over the said land to Chodulo. Uh, and Santiago executed an affidavit ratifying the transfer of rights to Chodulo. Chodolo discovered that spouses Hernandez were able to obtain title over the said lot. Now, the issue in this case, to whom should the lot be awarded? Is it to the petitioners who possessed and cultivated the lot since 1929 up to the present, but do not have a certificate of title? Or to the respondents who have a certificate of title, but are not in possession of the controverted lot? So we have here again two cases, one who is in possession of the real property, but do not they do not have a certificate of title, but they have beneficial ownership. The other one is uh, one who has legal title because they are the registered owners of the property. It was held that title to real property refers to that upon which ownership is based. It is the evidence of the right of the owner or the extent of his interest, by which means he can maintain control and assert a right to exclusive possession and enjoyment of the property. Chodulo's open, continuous, exclusive, notorious possession and occupation of the lot in the concept of owner for more than 30 years vested him and his heirs title over the lot. So Chodulo possessed and occupied the lot in the concept of an owner. Since 1929, Chodulo cultivated the controverted land, built his home, raised his children. He filed a homestead application but failed to pursue the same. After his demise, all his children, the youngest, continued to till the land. So the equitable title of the one who is in possession of the property prevailed even uh, against the uh, registered owner because he already has a vested right on the land. Okay, so he was able to um, satisfy all the requirements. First, he has, legal, he has equitable ownership over the property. And the cloud on the title consisting of uh, the transfer certificate of title okay, was uh, proven to be in fact invalid, ineffective, or unenforceable as against the plaintiff. Okay, uh, Santiago's shortly possession and cultivation of the lot could not best in title. While he tilled the land, he ceased to possess and cultivate the same. He abandoned the property and allowed Chodolo to exercise all acts of ownership. His brief possession of the lot could thus not best him title. Settled is the rule that an action for quieting of title is imprescriptible, where the person seeking relief is in possession of the disputed property. A person in actual possession of a piece of land under claim of ownership may wait until his possession is disturbed or his title is attacked before taking steps to vindicate his right, and that his undisturbed possession gives him the continuing right to seek the aid of the court of equity to ascertain and determine the nature of the adverse claim of a third party. 
and its effect on its title. So whenever a person is in possession of the last subject of the action, action for quieting of title is imprescriptive. Okay? Abilis versus Court of Appeals is the special civil action of quieting of title under Rule 64, the proper remedy for settling a boundary dispute. So does it satisfy the requirements, the two requirements for an action of quieting of title? The construction of the bamboo fence and closing the disputed property and the moving of earthen dikes are not the plow or doubts which can be removed in an action for quieting title. Remember, Diva, um, there are two requirements. One is legal or equitable title on the property. So in this case, the first requirement was met because the plaintiff has legal title. Okay. However, the cloud must be an instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding. So in this case, there is no instrument, there is no record, okay? There is no encumbrance or proceeding. Now, uh, can, the, can the construction of bamboo fence or the moving of earth and dice constitute the cloud that can be removed from the title? So the Supreme Court said, an action to quiet title or to remove cloud may be not be brought for the purpose of settling a boundary. Because you have two titles covering different portions of the property. There is only a dispute relating to the boundary of your respective property. So that is not the kind of cloud okay, that can be removed in an action to quiet by them. Filipinas S. Lon versus Vianes. In this case, Pemco asserted that it is the registered owner of a parcel of land on which it constructed its manufacturing plant. Pemco alleged that uh, Pemco filed, was the one who filed a complaint for quieting of title. So the two requisites, the petitioner Pemco has a legal right in the property by virtue of the title that is in his name and that the deed claimed to be casting a cloud on the title uh, Another original certificate of title is invalid and null and void. Raising the invalidity of a certificate of title in an action for quieting of title is not a collateral attack because it's central imperative and essential in such an action that the complainant shows the invalidity of the deed which casts cloud on the title. Okay, quieting of title is a direct attack on the title. Why? Because in the second requisite for quieting of title, you must show that the instrument, record, claim, encumbrance, or proceeding, in which in this case is the transfer certificate of title, is in fact invalid, ineffective, or unenforceable. The complaint for quieting of title filed against the petitioner does not amount to a collateral attack because at the heart of the action for quieting of title was the genuineness of the certificate of title. Uh, it was held that underlying objectives or relief sought both in quieting of title and annulment of title are essentially the same, adjudication of the ownership of the disputed lot and nullification of the question certificates of title. Okay, so we now go to the case of Lino versus Court of Appeals. The evidence shows that the disputed portion was originally possessed openly, continuously in the concept of owner by one Karagay, the father of Juliana, and had been, had been declared in his name. Tacking the previous possession of her father to her own, he had been in possession of the disputed property for about 45 years until their possession was disturbed when Estrada informed Juliana that the disputed portion was registered in De Vera's name. Okay, so again, we have here equitable ownership okay, in favor of Juliana and legal ownership in favor of De Vera. So during his lifetime, De Vera, her first cousin, and whom she regarded as a father, borrowed from her the tax declaration 
of her land to be used as collateral for, for a loan. So she was made to sign some documents, the contents of which she did not know, that she discovered the fraudulent inclusion of her land when Estrada so informed her daughter and sought to eject them. Mere possession of certificate of title under the Torrent system is not conclusive as to the holder's true ownership of all the property described therein, for he does not, by virtue of that certificate alone, became the owner of the land illegally included. A land registration court has no jurisdiction to decree a lot to persons who have never asserted any right of ownership over it. So Juliana, whose property had been wrongfully registered in the name of another, but which had not yet passed into the hands of third parties, can properly seek its recondience. So an action to quiet title to property in one's possession is imprescriptible. Her undisturbed possession over a period of 52 years gave her a continuing right to seek the aid of the court of equity to determine the nature of the adverse claim of a third party and the effect on her own title. So in this case, Juliana was able to satisfy both requirements for an action to quiet title. First, she had an equitable right over the real property because she had been openly and continuously possessing the same for the uh, period required to best ownership in her through acquisitive prescription. And second, the legal title in favor of De Vera was shown to be invalid, ineffective, and unenforceable. Why? Because even though the property was registered in his name, it was procured through fraud. And third, uh, the period of time uh, during which um, Juliana kept silent and did not file any action to quiet title will not be taken against her because an action to quiet title with respect to the person in possession of the realty is not subject to prescription. It is imprescriptible. The person in possession of the realty can wait until her possession is disturbed before um, she files an action. The quiet title. Okay, Uberas versus CFI. So in this case, the petitioners filed a complaint against respondents for quieting of title. The case was dismissed by the trial court on the ground of prescription. As more than 10 years had elapsed counted from the, from the registration of the extrajudicial declaration of airship and the issuance of the corresponding title in the name of Pedro Uberas. However, the respondent court failed to take into account the averments of petitioners' complaint that they are co-owners and possessors of the property and that the malicious and illegal acts committed by the defendants were known to the plaintiffs only in 1977. An action to quiet title to property in the possession of the plaintiff is imprescriptible and that where there are material facts to be inquired into and resolved on the basis of evidence, which will determine the legal precepts to be applied. So in this case, in co-ownership, as you will learn later, the possession of one of the co-owners is not deemed to be, uh, is deemed to be the possession of the other co-owners. It is not deemed to be against the other co-owners. While respondent court summarily dismissed the complaint, on the ground of prescription, notwithstanding contrary factual averments in the complaint, which would clearly rule out prescription. So when a co-owner possesses the property, he possesses uh, the presumption that he possesses not only for himself, but also for the benefit of the other co-owner. So prescription will not run unless the co-owner manifestly and expressly repudiates the co-ownership and asserts that and asserts exclusive ownership over the real. Municipal Rural Bank of Libmanan versus Ordonez. So in this case, respondent filed a complaint for quieting of title against the petitioner bank. She alleged that she is the owner of a parcel of land to inheritance and that she and her predecessors in interest have acquired ownership of the state to acquisitive prescription. 
it is in fact true. Petitioner denied the same and alleged that he is the true and absolute owner of the realty and the property was previously owned by Roberto who mortgaged the land to the petitioner but subsequently failed to satisfy his obligation. The right of a plaintiff to have his title to land quieted as against one who is asserting an adverse claim is not barred while the plaintiff remain in actual possession of the land, claiming to be the owners thereof. The reason for this rule being that while the owner um, in P continues liable to an action proceeding or suit, he has a continuing right to the aid of the court of equity to ascertain and determine the nature of such claim and its effect on his title. For one to be considered in possession, one need not have actual or physical occupation of every square inch of the property. So in this case, the respondent and her predecessors in interest authorized Samudio as caretaker of the subject land. Thus, Samudio's occupation of the disputed land as early as 1975 is considered as evidence of the latter's occupation of the property. Petitioner's argument that the respondent's possession must not be a mere fiction but must in fact be actual is unavailing as this requirement is applicable only in proceedings for land registration. Okay? And the last case, we have the case of Mamad Sual versus Muson, referring again to the imprescriptibility of an action to quiet title if the plaintiffs are in possession of the property. Again, the Supreme Court reminded us that when a person is in possession of the realty, he may wait until his possession is disturbed or his title is attacked before taking steps to vindicate his right. The rule is that the petitioners may wait until their possession is disturbed. The statute of limitation is not available as a defense to an action to remove a cloud from title over property in possession of the petitioners. It is not necessary that the person seeking to quiet title is the registered owner of the property in question. Title to property does not necessarily mean the original transfer certificate of title. It can connote acquisitive prescription by possession in the concept of owner. Indeed, one who has an equitable right or interest in the property may also file an action to quiet title under the law. So that completes our discussion on quieting of title. Thank you for listening.